then let me start up the recording here. Um, I first thing I'll start off with, as I've been starting with everybody else, is the improvement process, mindset and improvement. How do you go about getting better? Because hopefully, you know, um, however many years from now, you're not still relying on me for um, improvement. Hopefully, by that point, you'll know how to implement your own improvement. Um, that is hopefully the goal here. Um, yeah, so I just kind of want to make you self-sufficient at some point. Um, so let's start off by basic mindset improvement. I, I think you already have a great mindset of making sure you're focusing on improvement because, like you said, that will lead to more wins, that will lead to climbing, that will lead to more fun. If your mindset is on getting better, um, it'll kind of lead to all the rest. So make sure you're focusing on that. Now, when it comes to the improvement process, this is how I climbed as well as how um, additionally, how I do my coaching as well is by the, the, the basic principles of identifying mistakes and improving upon those. Um, this is I, when I first started playing the game, I started in season three and I started in silver. And uh, then since then, I've hit like top 50 a couple times. And a lot of that just comes from this method that I used um, of identifying mistakes. And this is also how I do coaching for people. The secret sauce behind it is I identify mistakes. Obviously, at this point with my, you know, very large knowledge pool of the game, I'm able to do that a little bit better than most, but I identify what people are doing wrong. I help them see what they're doing wrong. We identify the solutions and then we apply from there. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the process that I want you to hopefully be able to learn how to do, which you'll kind of catch on as we go along here. Um, but the basics of that and is to firstly identify the mistake. Now, um, I'll, I'll give you an easy example that I've been going over with everybody else. And that is uh, to think about deaths because deaths are a very, very easy example. Everybody knows deaths are mistakes and that they're bad. Um, but if I just stopped there and I said, oh, okay, um, during this coaching session, you died a lot. Bye. <laughs> then you'd probably leave feeling very unsatisfied because that didn't help very much just to say, oh, you died a lot because that mm -hmm. might have been very obvious and it didn't really get you anywhere. So you need more extra steps in there. Secondly, you want to be thinking not just what is the mistake, but what is the issue within the mistake? So yes, you died, but why did you die? So what, what are some common reasons why people usually die? Well, for me, I'm as you see, I'm on Reinhardt. I'm going to be very aggressive. I play Rhein a little too aggressive sometimes. My brother's a GM tank, so I've heard GM advice many times. Mm -hmm. So I have some clues, but I'm not the greatest at remembering to implement mm -hmm. them in game. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So um, over aggression, like you said, and mm -hmm. anything else that can cause deaths. Uh. I'm not the greatest at playing my corners sometimes, Co so I get caught usage. out. Yeah, so that'd mm -hmm. be poor, I get caught poor out. positioning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep. And then, like, other roles, it's just not swapping, trying mm -hmm. to play into a counter, and the counter's just better than you. Yeah, yep, that can be another nuance to it. Other common ones could be, like, lack of awareness. Like, if you didn't know that there was somebody behind you shooting at you. Um, or, I do that, too. <laughs> yeah, or misuse of, misusage of abilities. Like, if you, you know, could have shielded and you didn't, or you mismanaged your shield, or you charged in or fire struck when you shouldn't have, things like that. And also, like, maybe, like, poor movement. Like, if you just, like, stood still or walked in a straight line, things like that. Mm -hmm. Um. So all that can lead to deaths. So now, now those are the uh, issues within the mistake, but we want to take it a step further and identify the solution to those. So if you are dying frequently, you want to be looking for the repetitive big mistakes. Those are usually best to improve on. Um, you want to be thinking, what could I do better? You know, how could I have fixed it? So um, if you're dying because you overextended, maybe you don't push as far or you want to mm -hmm. identify when is the time to push? When when should you not push? Um, if you are dying because you're too far on the open, maybe using cover is the solution. Now, finally comes application, which we will discuss application further into the session when we actually have examples to work with. Um, but you want to make sure you're looking to actually you know, put it into your gameplay, not just stop at knowing about it. Um, mm -hmm. So that's, that's really the basics for the moment on that. Um, any questions on any of it?
Uh, no question, just a word of warning. I do play controller. Okay. All good. Um, so. So you're gonna probably see some weird <laughs> things that wouldn't match a, a regular mouse and keyboard's movement. Gotcha, gotcha. Do you play on PC though? Uh, I play on PC console? in practice, but when I'm home and for a lot for a lot of my time playing Overwatch, it was on console. Gotcha. All right, sounds good. I'll just be a minute or so while I'm looking for something to talk about now. Good thing. Alright, pretty solid so far. I like the different aggressions we're taking. Here, like other like minor things would be like we go for a fire strike when we're like one inch away from people, so maybe not the most valuable fire strike to be taking when we could just keep swinging. Um, additionally, we kind of like pause on the one HP junk rat because we're purpled when we're, you know, when we still have a lot of health left. So, you know, another yeah. minor thing. So, part just, of me was kind of waiting for him to come out of AFK and just <laughs> waiting to start getting blown up by him. So, mm -hmm. I was like trying to play a little cautious, but still trying to get the kill. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which and then it just comes down to watch it once again, just like watching health bar because I don't think like junk rat by himself can't like blow you up fast enough to where you you know you shred through 500 hp in two seconds when he alone is looking at you mm -hmm. very nice all right so firstly mm -hmm. um we so here like watching health bar because i don't think that charging is the play when you're when you're into their spawn is to play when you're 250 HP. That is a common thing I do. <laughs> yep. I, like I said, the overaggression, I don't pay attention to my stats mm -hmm. or my health bar, and it's like, well, yep. guess I'll die or my supports will come in clutch with my DPS. Yeah, exactly. Um, so if you feel like that's a common thing, we could even get into that like right now. Um, if oh, you'd it's like definitely to. a common thing. <laughs> yeah, so why don't we touch in on that? So I'm going to give you a tool that is very handy for managing your aggression of when should you push, when should you back, and that is aggression scaling. This is a tool that I kind of developed on my own, and it's a it's like a mental mental method to approach your aggression. Um, and uh, the way that you approach this is to think of your aggression as if you were on a or, or if it was on a scale, right? So at zero percent, you have super passive at 100 percent, you have super aggressive and at 50 percent, you have your neutral which is neither aggressive nor passive you're not sitting back and you're not charging oh. into their team you're just kind of poking at them right you're kind of going and you're backing out and you're going in backing out um now you're going to adjust upwards along this scale with uh, when you have opportunities and advantages and you're going to adjust downwards on the scale with disadvantages, with a lack of resources, and with danger. You're going to go down. Mm -hmm. Now let's define a couple of those for you. Advantages and disadvantages. Now we can get... Uh, the, the very basics of that is going to be like up kills. To... Yep. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be like kills, right? So like if you're up a person, maybe you go from like 50 to 60. Two people, you know, go up to 70. Three people, 80. And four people, 90. And so forth, right? You just go much, much more aggressive the more kills you have. Same thing with, you know, if you're down kills. You, you're you down a person. You don't, you're don't. you not immediately losing. the. It's not an immediate lost fight. Maybe you just go from 50 to 40 on your aggression, right? Mm -hmm. And then so forth. And then there's a lot of other things that are going to be advantages and disadvantages, right? Which team has closer spawns? more health, more abilities, more ults, better positioning, right? More grouped up or vice versa, more spread out, right? Mm -hmm. Things like that. Now, other things that will impact this, so uh, opportunities such as like is do you see someone who's out of position or 1 HP or can you land a big fat shatter? Things like that, right? Those are going to be opportunities mm -hmm. that you can take which you can get more aggressive for those. Um then disadvantages which pull you down the scale um or i guess sorry, we already went over disadvantages um other ones are gonna be lack of resources so resources are gonna be things such as your health bar your shield if you don't have health you can't push it 
right? Just flat up, right? Like if you are one HP and you try to, you'll die. And then you're, that forces you to back out, right? Like you, it, in a perfect uh, world, you could be aggressive 24 seven, but these things drag you down the scale against your own wishes. Unfortunately, you want to play aggro, but sometimes you can't because other things hold you back like your health. If you also don't have any shield and you're trying to walk through the open at a bastion, you're probably going to die, right? So your um, you, your uh, resources are very important to pay attention to because if you don't have them, you can't push. So be very mm -hmm. aware of them. Keep your eyes open. And that's going to be a th something to note here is that your aggression is dictated by your awareness. If you don't know what's happening, you can't properly gauge your aggression. But as we just talked about, there's so much to be paying attention to that will dictate when you push, when you back. So make sure you're watching your HUD to know what health you have, what um, you know, what your shield health is, things like that. Um, finally, danger. That's going to be things like, okay, is there an old diva bomb going off right in my face? How many people are looking at you? Things like that. Right. That, that's also going, be also going to adjust it. You can play more aggro. If one person is looking at you, than if five people are looking at you, right? Um, is mm -hmm. Bastion in his sentry form, or is he just shooting at you in recon? Things like that, right? Um, other things, note that this is very flexible, so don't... Sometimes, occasionally, it'll lock in. Like, you know, you might be able to be... If you're just staggering them, you can stay at 100% for 20 seconds, but... Mm -hmm. um, if you're in the middle of a fight, know that it can change up very, very quickly. You could start the fight off because every fight you're usually at a 50% neutral because nothing's happened yet. Um, so you start off at 50%. You see, oh, dang, the Reinhardt's 1 HP. I'm going to go forwards and swing on him, right? So you push forwards to 100% to capitalize on your opportunity. And then Bastion shreds your HP with his sentry form and your <laughs> 1 HP. And you now are at 0%. So you just, in the course of two seconds went from 50 to 100 to zero, right? Yeah. So it's very flexible a lot of the times. And you just want to be paying attention to all these different things and keeping your eyes and ears open so you know when to do what. Um, all that makes sense. Any questions on any of it? Mm -mm. Nope. Yep. So as you it's get been, better. It's a lot of things I've been told before mm -hmm. by players around me, coach, get mm -hmm. my brother, other higher up players have, have a little more game sense than me. Yep. I've been told I kind of just go off of intuition and like the basics and not mm -hmm. always on the deep details that I need. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then, I mean, honestly, like we could get into therefore like the application, right? Um, like we can just go into it right away then. Um, you feel like, you know, you, this is stuff that you've heard before, but maybe it's not being applied. Yeah, many times, but maybe it's not being applied to your gameplay properly. Right. Mm -hmm. So how do you take knowledge and put it into habit? Right. Um, that is going to happen, not just by playing the game, not just by autopiloting and contrary to popular belief, not just by playing to play, but as we discussed before, by intentionally focusing on improvement. And what that means is that you're going to be actively focusing on the thing you're trying to work on while you're playing. What that looks like in your gameplay is you're going to come into the game and you're going to think to yourself, aggression scaling, aggression scaling, aggression scaling, aggression scaling, watch your health, watch your health, watch your health, watch your shield, watch your shield, watch your shield. And you're going to give yourself a constant stream of reminders to pay attention to your screen. And when mm -hmm. you remind yourself constantly to watch your health bar, then you're probably going to look at your health bar more frequently than if you weren't at all. Right. And, as you remind yourself to do that and your gameplay is therefore better, right? You're watching your health bar. You're not pushing in when you shouldn't be. That will improve that part of your gameplay. And then as you do that long enough, that will form it as a habit. Once it forms as a habit, you can kind of, you know, it's just going to come naturally now. You kind of move on to the next thing. It's not going to be something you need to focus on as much. Um, mm -hmm. At some point in the future, you, you know, when you, you know, reach like a master's GM, you won't even need to think about aggression scaling because it'll all just come naturally to you, right? I don't even, I don't need to think about aggression scaling. That's just a tool. You, well, at, some, at a certain point, it's just, it's just going to come um, just, you'll, you'll just have it in a snap, right? This is what I do now. Um, then final thing is just don't try to work on everything all at the same time. There's so much in this game, right? Like even in, even what I just said, that alone 
aggression aggression slash uh oh sorry awareness slash aggression right and aggression scaling that's a massive category of stuff to be working on right if we left this session that alone could you know take weeks to work on and it's a lot to process yeah so don't oh one second you mean yeah coach needs to talk to you oh sure mm -hmm. want this headset sure hello hello how's it going Hey, uh, so I'm trying to reschedule Summer right now. Sure. Um, do you want me to just have her whisper you, or do you want me to go through Medify, or what? Um, so if you want to reschedule, you can do it through the Calendly, which I can I can just give her the Calendly link and just have her mm -hmm. do it through that, because mm -hmm. over on Medify, we would have already, like, I guess, technically done that session, so I don't think we can, yeah, like, yeah. reschedule it. So I'll just give her the Calendly link, and she can do it from that. Um, yeah, if that, if that's, you know, works. No, that's perfect. That's perfect. All right. Cool. All right. Thanks. Yep. No problem. See you. Hello. There. <laughs> Hello. Wait. All right. So what was I saying? <laughs> um, wait, I, I completely lost my train, train of thought there then. <laughs> Me too. Uh, just being able to implement things. Yeah. Indeed. Um, being able to implement, um, focusing on it while you play. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I was saying don't try to do too much. So instead, focus on one category of things or if this is such a massive category narrow it down and focus on one to three smaller things within the category such as if we find by the end of the session that it keeps cropping up that you are you know not watching your health bar and not watching your your shield health make that the primary focus as you're going forwards and then go from there once you work on once you improve on that Right, so just take mm -hmm. it one step at a time, basically, and we'll at the by the end we'll uh, I'll give my recommendations on what to work on, pretty much. All right, one second, I'm sending that link over. Yes, she is okay. Wait, didn't copy. What? All right, cool. All right, so continuing. Um, all right, oh, yeah, yeah, let's keep going. So there, there we kind of got bailed out um, by teammates. Yes. <laughs> um, but just remember, that, you know, just because the mistake isn't punished doesn't mean it's not a mistake. Right? Reaper yeah. could have, you know, probably easily shot you and killed you, or if he had Wraith, then we die there, or... Um, you know, if anybody just shoot, is a little bit better on their team, we ended up losing that. They just sneeze and, on me, like oh, Ramatra does. Yep, exactly, right. There you go. So then that just means now we're dead. Teams can lose that fight without us. Oh. <laughs> My five like mode teammates, I just yeah. saw a soldier running at me. <laughs> All right. Um, here. I think I call to back here. I think I actually remember. It's like, yeah, this ain't winnable. Yeah. Um. Uh oh. Pain. <laughs> All right. So, couple things here, right? Um. Firstly, ignoring the shield. How many people do we get here with that shattering? By the time it landed, probably just the tank. Yeah. When I was looking, it was like, oh, I could at least get two or three here. The Reaper starts backing. Mm -hmm. And then the shield goes up and he wraiths. So if the shield weren't there, it would have ended up just being one. Yeah, so it would have been one. Um, if, Reaper nice didn't, if, if Reaper didn't have wraith, that's two. Right, so maybe not that, maybe not the best position for a shatter currently. Um, secondly, there's a shield, right? So very, very. Yeah. What, what's a very easy? Uh, so this once again. So uh, I forgot to mention this before, but like um, as we we're going over mistakes, but mistakes come in all shapes and sizes. They're not just deaths, right? You have yeah. things there's like a lot of them. Yeah, exactly. Letting your teammates die. Um, not getting a kill when you could have gotten a kill. Misusing your abilities, or in this case, right, misusing your ultimate. What's a very easy way that you could have worked around the fact that Sigma, or that not Sigma, Ramatra has a shield? Just held off or played more aggressive once I got health. 
Mm-hmm. So, um, he it's looks a, like go ahead. He pops Nemesis after. So if I had waited on Shatter, I could have got that out, waited it out. He can't use Shield while on Nemesis, so mm-hmm. then I could have pushed on since Bastion's turret mode yeah. is still on cooldown. And it's also you know the other important thing to note is it's just a really long cooldown that he has, right? It's yeah. a, once he throws that out there, that's 13 seconds, 13, 13, yeah, 13 seconds, 13, 14. yeah, something like that. So, um, once he throws it out there, you have so much time to just very, very easily either a wait for it to go down because it you know doesn't stay up for super long and it'll still be on cooldown, so you can wait for it, right? So, realistically. pay attention to what team comp are they on right team comp dictates play style you're going to be playing differently against a ramatra than you would against like a diva right you're not going to have to worry about a shield up against a diva but you do against a ramatra so therefore um make sure you're watching you know your the tab i don't know if he's on the discord sorry (laughs) all good all good man this is a weird what the sorry i'm getting distracted by this weird interaction here as I'm spinning my camera. <laughs> the good old replay viewer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrible. <laughs> um, so, very, very easy way to do this is to make sure that you're watching kill, or not kill feed, uh, tab, right? Press tab at a very minimum once between every single fight of the game so that you can watch did they swap characters? Did we swap characters? What ults do we have? It gives you a lot of info to work with. Oh, I look at it all the time. Yeah, exactly. Cool, cool, cool. That's I mean that's a good ha- uh this match I went um Coliseo, this one I picked this one over said this one over Gibraltar because this one was kind of a it was a loss thir- I went 13 and 8 died a little more than I should have and played Ram I think right after that shatter I switched to Ram off of the Rhine gotcha no. yeah for for future reference as well because I'm, I'm just so that there's um clarity here best games um losses are our minor preference but best games are where you felt the matches were even so it wasn't a roll in either direction and also where you felt you played averagely not super great not super terrible because if you're playing worse than average then you're just making a lot of mistakes that you can identify yourself making mistakes that you don't usually make but we want to be going over mistakes that maybe aren't as easy for you to identify so that you know i'm actually being helpful and then also we want to be going over mistakes that you're making on a very consistent basis not just the you know 25 percent of the time that you're doing bad sort of deal um mm-hmm. that that makes sense so if, if if that's the case, I mean we can keep going over this that's fine but if you also if you felt like the other one you felt uh, you played more averagely that might also be a better one to go over I don't have these are the only two tank codes I have at the mm-hmm. moment and the other okay. I went like 30 and 1 mm-hmm. <laughs> and we won pretty yep. pretty easily there were some mistakes still made on mm-hmm. on Sigma but it was a much better performance than this yeah and then the ones again those aren't wonderful because then you know there's not as much to go over and then that's not happening every game right <laughs> mm-hmm Yep. Um, so, I mean, this is fine. We can keep going. But, yeah, so walk past the shield. Also, just really far away. You know what it, like, very, very easy way to go about this is using cover a bit better, right? Instead of... Mm-hmm. Using the corners. Yeah, yeah, using this corner. And then just pushing past and, like, shattering from closer up and past the shield, right? It would be better. Mm-hmm. And waiting for them to group up a bit more as well, because they're pretty spread out. So maybe, like wait for mercy to come around this corner um you can try to get like these guys when they line up but they're pretty spread out for the moment All right. okay um so you landed the pin um let's talk real quick on target priority um ramatra maybe not the person to be going for in this situation um when it comes to who should you look at who should you shoot at generally the answer is the easiest things to kill because those things will be the guys that actually die you actually do something if you kill the easier targets um Mm -hmm. 
whereas the harder targets will obviously stay alive. Now there's also the uh, there's additionally the um, other input here of who's the highest value to kill, which sometimes is going to be a little bit different. Obviously, tanks are pretty high value to kill, but if they're high value and they just never die, then you're never doing anything. So a lot of times, easy to kill is a very high priority. Um, mm. And by design, tanks are the hardest things in the game to kill. They have two to three times the health of other characters. They have, um, therefore, that makes them the easiest to heal. They have armor. They have shields. They have tanking abilities. All make them very, very difficult. We just pinned Reinhardt, or sorry, pinned Ramatra, and uh, he just tanked it. Right, and he got healed, and now he's good. Yeah. Um. So therefore, if you have equal opportunity, so equal opportunity says I can right here choose to pin Ramatra or pin the Mercy. You pin the Mercy, not the Ramatra. You pin the easier target to kill, and that mm -hmm. will actually secure the kill. Um, and then additionally, up on, on top of uh, equal opportunity, you also have actively seeking out those other characters, which is harder as Reinhardt to do. Like as Monkey, you can kind of like, you know, as, or dive characters, you can just kind of leap past the, the front line. Reinhardt's a little bit harder, but you can also actively try to seek out those other characters and go after them. Um, and that's not to say that we never shoot at the tanks. Um, you can shoot at them if they're low, if they're out of position, if they're the if only thing. If it's worth to... the effort. Yeah, exactly, right? If they, if the hard thing to kill is now made easy, go for it. Or if you have no other alternative. A lot of times as Reinhardt, if you're just chilling on the front line and you're just poking, you can't instantly bypass the tank. So if you can't immediately walk past the ram, swing at him, right? There's no reason not to swing at him. Um, but there's... There's examples like this where we could easily go for those squishies, like the Reaper or the Mercy, and they'd both be easier to kill than the uh, the Ram. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that could be. I've been told not to shoot the tank yep. a few <laughs> times in casual comp play, competitive play, whatever it is if I'm doing with my brother. Yep. In here, they yell at me for it sometimes. It's like, why? Sometimes I go for the <laughs> ego. It's like, I want this tank dip mm -hmm. and I want a Chad, and then yep. I get deleted. And it's like, well. Yeah, Back but spawn hobo. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. And just remember that, like, sometimes I mean, honestly, in my opinion, it's a bigger tank diff if you're getting three kills on squishies than getting, you know, trying to go for the one kill on the tank, right? Um, mm -hmm. sometimes that like, um, trying to go for the ego play isn't always the the best play. You know, sometimes it works. Like, you know, if you want to go for the solo shatter on the tank, uh, if you're rolling them, go ahead. If you're <laughs> if you're not, maybe I wouldn't go for it. Right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, those you're 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 gonna have a lot more value if you're just get actually getting kills, right? Completely fine to go after the the ram now that he is isolated away from his team. Right? Yeah, he, he, he put himself in a bad spot. I know he's exactly. going for the health pack, but mm -hmm. then there's a reaper, a Ryan, yep. and a soldier barreling in on him. Exactly. All right, and now it supports. We. Just hoping my brother kills him before he kills me. <laughs> Both of us waiting on the same. He, he's fax meme. Yeah, he, gotcha. he's my brother. Gotcha, gotcha. We had played a couple the day he had his session with you. Cool, 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 cool. Why did I peek? <laughs> I don't yep. know. I yep, asked Brandon it. to heal me. It's like, please. I know you have the health thingy. <laughs> After that first big push, we got it kind of fell apart. Right. Um, I don't know if there's a massive reason for you to be backing up um, from this ultimate. Right? We're kind of like hard backing here because like look at where Kart's at, look at where yeah. the, the team's at. And we're like, look, look where you're at. You're like really far behind your whole team here when this ult isn't really that dangerous. Yeah, you can. You can see it took a chunk of my shield out each time. You can block the direct hit, and then you can block its splash sometimes, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, what what range is Reinhardt? On that close range, aside from fire close strike, range, right? What range is um is you know everything Ramatra, on their team? Ram. Good old long range until you go for that brawl style play yeah. with Nemesis. Yeah, so he's a little bit more flexible, so he can do like both. So, um, that just being like just just off of the tank up tank matchup alone, um, you are more brawly than he is, right? So mm. therefore. We can't just like you know give them a t- all the free space in the world and just let them play at that medium range. We want to be playing at that closer range, otherwise you do nothing. Um, mm-hmm. Additionally, team composition also goes into plays into this as well. Um, what team comp would you? You've been playing this game for a long while. What what team comp would yours generally be considered? Uh, kind of like a knockoff rush brawl. Yeah, rush or brawl, right? The only thing because you have the the soldier yeah. and the Moira, which kind of change it up. Yeah, I'd say I'd say Moira's still brawl, like she, cause she's she doesn't really work great with spam. She's not really a dive character. Moira is a brawl character, but soldiers, he's he's flexible enough. Oak. He's yeah, he's he's not a brawl character, but he's flexible enough, right? But you have mostly brawl, which would make you a brawl comp, right? Um, mm-hmm. if you have the majority of one comp, then that's pretty much what you are, right? For all intents and purposes, um, enemy team, what would they generally be considered? That. Tempted to say poke. Yeah, maybe maybe In a way. poke with what like hybrid? Like what would they be mixed with? High damage. Yeah, well, I know the comps. I'm not too good at yeah. naming because sure. I only know the ones I'm mm-hmm. best in. But I can yeah, all good. So fight. the three. Let me show. You, send you a real quick um chart. I'm gonna send you this over Discord. Cool. So this chart basically give names the primary compositions that have ex- always existed in Overwatch. And still kind of exist, right? And there's, of course, sub comps like uh, beneath these, right? You have uh, dive compositions, which you've probably heard of, right? That's your monkey, diva, Genji, tracer, etc., right? I'm sure you're familiar with that one, right? Brawl or rush, what you just said, and then spam, which you just mentioned as poke, right? Um, that's going to be your long range characters, brawls, your short range characters as your very basics. Hybrid is kind of going to be the anything in between when you're not really running anything in particular. Um, in mm-hmm. team, this can be something doable in like team environments. In ranked environments, usually that just means you're kind of on something deathmatchy where you're kind of just all running your own stuff and usually as a negative connotation. Therefore, um, usually you want to be one of the three unless you're once again in like a team environment. Um, dive, generally speaking, start off far away. You dive in really close. You your pacing pick is gonna, squishy. yeah. You pick a squishy. It's you, you can play it either one of two ways. You can either just go hard diving from the get go, or you can start off slow and just build up momentum as you get picks and kills and ults and things like that. Right? Brawl and spam. These are very opposed to each other. They are very op- much opposites. Brawl is a close range comp. Therefore, you want to and need to be playing close and fast. If you, as Brawl, are not running in and playing fast, then they just shoot at you for free while you're doing nothing. Spam, on the other hand, is a far and slow comp, right? The further you are, right, if if you let it drag out, the more time you have to go pew, pew, pow, pow from that range, which gives you an advantage, right? The longer it drags out. So they're very opposed to each other. Brawl generally wins, if they get on top of on on top of spam, spam wins if they can tippy toe away from brawl. Um, as a rough rock paper scissors, generally speaking, dive has a minor advantage against spam. Spam has a minor advantage against brawl. Brawl has a minor advantage against dive. Right? Um, <laughs> there's not dive can instantly get on top of spam, and spam is usually a little bit more like glass cannony. Right? Um, spam can a lot of times stay away from brawl, which mean that which puts the pressure on brawl to push in and get to you. Brawl, there's not as much for, to dive against, and it's going to in a lot of cases. Um, in a lot of cases, you you know you don't really have very much to to dive against. Plus, if they have to come to you, then that's an advantage for brawl, right? Um, that's mostly it with with all that um if so here on the enemy team um they are i'd say primarily pokey with a little bit of brawl mixed in there right so maybe you can even say like they're a poke brawl hybrid 
right? Mm -hmm. um, because they have the Mercy, which is what? Poke. Poke, and you have the Bastion, which is... When I think fashion, I just like think of high damage, like yeah. a high damage comp. Which he, he, with his recon, he's more poke because of it's such a slow fire rate. But yeah. then he's then he goes re turbo, and I just think of like high damage. Yeah, which I wouldn't. For that I don't first. know if I necessarily like say that's a comp, like a, I guess a strict composition. If you're, I'd say most of the time you know, that's still a poke comp in a lot of cases because mm -hmm. because it, it's still medium ranged. It's yes, it's high damage, but a lot of those other like what what, what else would be considered high damage like Junkrat, still poke. Junkrat, um, Anzo, still poke, right? Yeah, things like that. Mean. So, um, I say he's still poke with a little bit of brawl mixed in here because remember that different characters can be you know good at multiple things. Um, yeah, Mercy, you know she's a good, really good in poke, pretty solid in dive, and not as not a, she's okay in a brawl, not not great in brawl, right? Mm -hmm. Um. Ramatra, he is going to be um very fluid, so he's gonna be hybrid. pretty yeah, he's hybrid. He's pretty solid with brawl and with poke, he's not a dive character. Um Baptiste, he's gonna be a good good with poke, or like really solid with poke. Um he's gonna be like pretty pretty good with a brawl and then bad with a with a uh, dive, right? So things like that. Overall they're kind of mixed. So we just said our team is a brawl. Their team is a poke slash brawl. Which team wants to be playing faster and closer? Us. Us, right? So, therefore, we don't want to just back up and give them all the space to run towards you with in a lot of cases here. We want to be playing more aggro, um, generally speaking. Yeah. All right, so let's see. Me back up. Reaper's trying to go in. Trying to support Reaper. Trying to boop him back. They use that. Um. Yeah, I think we just didn't get value out of the Reaper roll and they ended it up. Oh, should no. not be aim. going in. <laughs> yeah, my aim is not not the greatest. You said uh, you should not be going in. It didn't seem like it. Then I forget Brandon was still alive. I there's no yeah. support, but with what we're up on tanks, so it's a yeah. little more winnable in our favor. Yeah, it's, I'd say right now it's pretty even, right? It's like a three three. I know Will's dead. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, so you know it's. Oh, why does it say you're still dead? <laughs> he's like. Oh, oh no, that's it. Oh, never mind. Yeah, yep. never mind. Yep, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's it right now it's a little bit even, right? So it's not not the end of the world if we push a little, a little bit. Just so we don't want to go too far. Good shield. Here we could probably just be going and brawling to clean up these kills. We have an advantage here, mm -hmm. so you could even be popping your your punchy punches to go run in and get them. So maybe we could have caught the bap that way. Okay, watching the fact that we're not pushing car. Thought I had my shield. I wanted to push up past the window. Mm -hmm. I just so, didn't get up there quick enough in the Bastion. Mm -hmm. Doing Bastion things through me. Yep, so here. What is the primary thing saying, no, you can't do that? The window. The, win the, okay, that's, that's, the window and the Bastion, that's a massive thing. Sorry, that's a, I guess that's, I'd say two primary things. Two primary things. Window Bastion, yes, that's a big, big, big one there. So that, it would be considered what? So on aggression scaling, what category would that be under? They're going to be at least going 80, 90, just due to the fact that window's there, even though we're only down one. They can yeah. pump out a lot more damage than I can tank yeah. or so, shield or block. Da damage, so that would be under 
danger, right? So okay. danger is really high right. at the moment, which puts you down on that scale. And then additionally, what's the other thing that is primarily holding you back from getting aggressive? My health. Your health, right? You're half HP right now, right? That's going to, both of those combined means your aggression should be like what-ish right now? Should it be, you know, should it be 100, 0, 50, in between? Somewhere between zero to fifty. Yeah, so maybe, maybe I have let's... cover, I have supports, mm -hmm. yep. but I'm still not ready to go full bore. Yeah, so maybe we can say like something like thirty. Now what Maybe we did something like that and just like popped off to the left real quick. Right? Mm -hmm. Then we can start just punching at the Baptiste while using cover. Right. So this is still thirty thirty doesn't mean we're like Oof, like doing this, right? That'd be zero. Um, but mm -hmm. remember that for the first step to knowing when do we do what is n seeing it in the first place. My resolve. Yeah. Directed on something most likely. You are safe with me. Um, generally, because your shield is such a long cooldown, um, I would use it for higher value shielding purposes. So this is going to be mm -hmm. the same thing that applies to mo to all shields, but ex. Especially, especially when you only have it once every 13 seconds, you need to be using it when it's getting a lot of value, so you can use it too. Um, and this, like I said, this applies to most most things. You don't want to just spam it up a lot of the time when it comes to shields. You want to be using mm -hmm. it to block ultimates, to block abilities, to use it when high amounts of damage are coming in, when you or your teammates are in danger, when you're pushing really aggressively or backing out, right? Those are all going to be much, much higher value than just blocking a little bit of spam damage because, um, R A, Ramatra is the only person looking at you and he's not going to do really any damage at all. B, even if more people were looking at you, we're in a lot of we're in a good position with cover, with supports, right? So we don't need mm -hmm. to plop it. And then now that just means that, like, if we, like, chose to, like, drop on the cart here, we don't have that extra piece of uh, protection. Okay, back out a little far there. We are providing escorts. Yeah. Teammates kind of just like <laughs> fed a little Imploded. bit. <laughs> Solid. Okay, that was, that was the right usage of shield because we're using it to approach. Alright. Um. Let's talk two things here. Firstly, I mean, like, at least you died again. <laughs> <Thank Yeah>. you. <laughs> Whoopsie. But um, secondly, let's talk over the fact that we're, I'd say, maybe letting them play a little bit more aggressive once again. So just note that in generally speaking, when you're, when they're, when you are being aggressive and this applies with general aggression and also with ultimates and things like that. Um, ultimates that are used first, 
And when you're aggressive first, you generally have an advantage. They get more value than ults that are used second. So if we let them push in and get kills and use ults, then they get value. They might kill off the people who on our team who have ults. And then if we ult second, we have less support and we're more likely to lose it still. So therefore, the best time to be using ults is at the start of a fight. Mid fight's okay. Late fight's kind of situational. Um, and that's how you want to go about that. And that applies the same thing as like a general aggression. It's not end all mm -hmm. be all, but it's the same general idea. So here, maybe we could have been trying to pop all a hair quicker to put a little bit more pressure on them. Um, mm -hmm. And going off of that, then secondly, so, here, good. The mm -hmm. I coach gave me this tip, which I which it works out a lot. Is if you pop like not Rammel, but Nemesis mm -hmm. form, if they use it first, match them, and you'll win. Or should I treat his ult the same way? Um, so, if he if he ult... uses, so if he uses Nemesis first, use your yes. second so that you yes. can pummel him. and then I have that him. advantage mm -hmm. yep, with I agree. the shield. Um, I would say that uh, that would generally... Um, I'd say it's generally... Like if you're using it immediately afterwards, then it's going to be you know about even if you're giving it a little bit longer than like if you like give it like you know two three seconds then you'll have yours up a little bit afterwards i'd say honestly if you're using it like at the same time it's gonna get you around the same value um approximately but it's just then it's just gonna come down to who's in a better position for it um mm -hmm. really if you're both popping at the same time um yeah, that's all I'd say. Plus, they don't have they don't have their older like sixty to it. It would be the other thing as well. Um, other thing with your, I'm noticing that in a lot of cases here, like with your swinging, here we're just like doing a lot of over adjusting. So, um, I'm not it possibly. Yeah, I'm I'm not sure. I know you you need to be able to make turns with your controller, but also like there's just a lot of over adjusting with your swings here. Um, mm. Looking to keep on target, so we just kind of go past him like three times, and then also you look. I, I also notice you will end up looking down a lot. So like here, we like look down at his feet. Um, oh, maybe we're trying. Mm. Maybe you're trying to throw your E down, at, but we don't yeah, I you know, on my mattress especially. I tend to look down a lot more, thinking I have my cooldown so second yeah. early, mm -hmm. and then I kind of waste my old. Yep. Um, the other thing here is that we end up do running away. Okay, so you pop your old. All right, cool, cool. And we get shredded. And deleted. Yep. So let's look at um, what, what the problem is. Um, what would you say is the problem with this old timing? Immor, I'm at least half health, down two. Down two. And they are pretty much grouped yeah. up. I would. The main thing I'd say is the fact that you're down two, right? So generally speaking, now we already talked about the aggression scaling, but really quickly, how do, how do you tell whether or not you've won or lost a fight? Main ways to watch kill feed. Kill feed shows you when you're up or down. One to two people, up or down is an advantage or a disadvantage, right? So you play more aggro, you play more passive, like we said before. Two to three people, that's generally a one fight or a lost fight. Um, the reason why two's in the middle of that is because the, you know there's all those other things that go into it. So um, if here we're down two people, but let's say their whole team was one HP and you have your ult, go for it, right? That's still winnable. But if mm -hmm. we have no additional massive advantage, that's lost, right? If you're down two people and you have no other advantage, you lost it. Um, but otherwise, it would be you know if you it's it, it, so it's two to three ish, right? Um, is the number. Don't use ults in one or lost fights. And then if you've lost, you get out if you can. If you can't, you let them kill you. So here that's just an oh it's just an ult that's not gonna do anything because you're just or you already lost this at this point. Mm -hmm. And once again that comes down to watching kill feed. Um and awareness. So let's do wrap up review, go over the main points here. Ability usage. Um we were on Ryan and Ram. Ability usage, um, fire strikes, not too many issues. Charging, uh, you know, we can go into more nuances, but we didn't really. Shield usage, I don't think we. Honestly, I don't even think we went too much onto your abilities um, with Ryan Hart. Um, I think Ram, honestly, maybe about the same. We went over shield usage. Don't, you know, shield usage in general. Use it for high, you know, high value things, especially when such a long cooldown. Um, don't just spam it up for anything. 
use it mm. when it's for abilities, ultimates, pushing, backing, high damage, uh, danger, things like that, right? Um, besides that, honestly, I don't think there was too much else that I noticed. Overall abilities, which is all like a low to medium or lower end of that even for both your tanks. Um, the next, other person I do mm, main is Sigma. Gotcha. Um, then next comes ult usage. Ult usage with Shatter. Um, watch those things that can block it, like the shields. Make sure to play around that. And then also mm -hmm. on top of that, make sure you're playing you're playing a little bit closer. Make sure that you're being ambitious with it. Go for more people. Um, don't just like try to land one or two. Try to go for more if possible, two plus. Um, and just yeah, put yourself a little bit closer to capitalize on it. Rammel, you know, don't don't use it in one or lost fights. Right? So overall, mm -hmm. uh, ult usage maybe a little bit closer to a medium or lower end of a medium, something like that. Um, priority for you to work on. Then comes your mechanics. Mechanics, um, honestly, yeah, you just like watch the over adjusting, right? Um, like where you're just like going like s large swings. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just not thinking it's already there. I do that a lot with like enemy cooldowns. Like, oh, this Bastion's got to be out of turret form, and I peek and get destroyed because he's got like two seconds left. So it's just that general idea of it's almost done, but I'm not too sure. You are finished. Mm -hmm. well, like honestly, that, that wasn't too too much. That was like low priority. Um, next comes positioning. Positioning. Make sure that you are using cover. Make sure the good positioning is usage of cover, bad positioning is the absence of cover. Um, make sure that you're not playing too far behind your team. Sometimes you like back up really far. Um, make sure that you're just properly ranging yourself. Um, you hug corners and whatnot. Sometimes you just be a little too far in the open, then that's gonna get you killed. Overall, that one was like, once again, like maybe the lower end of a medium. Final thing, aggression, awareness slash aggression. That was the big 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 one right that that was that mm -hmm. was probably like a that's you know, my biggest yeah me you know more than all the other things we just talked about combined right um uh -huh. in, within this comes awareness right because that starts it off um you need to know what's happening to know what to do watch your health bar watch your abilities watch so watch your hud watch kill feed um, one to two, I mean, we, or we just went over this a second ago. What you know, we'll pay attention to whether whether you're winning or losing. Press tab frequently. Watch team comp. Team comp dictates play style, like we talked about with all those different team compositions. So pay attention to what you're running and what they're running, and how that dictates your aggression. Right? Watch. Pay attention to where is their team at, where is my team at. Sometimes we would be, you know, going in when we didn't have teammates, or backing out when we didn't need to. Um, mm -hmm. make sure you're just generally paying attention to your surroundings, right? And then therefore, translating that into your aggression. When do I push? When do I back? Um, aggression scaling, 0% super passive, 100% super aggro, 50% neutral. Um, go up with advantages and opportunities, down with disadvantages, lack of resources, which is a big one, and uh, um, with danger, right? So paying attention to all of those making sure that we're adjusting accordingly that was probably the big main stuff um for the session so to put that all in order number one that was it right right there mm -hmm. awareness slash aggression number two um number two probably came out to i don't know positioning as number two then ult usage then ability usage um that's really about it because the awareness slash aggression is such a massive category. You might even want to break it down further, right? Like maybe f start by focusing on, um, I guess, two main ones would be um, health and how that dictates. And uh, I, I who's guess up like and who's, a, who's yeah, alive and who's alive, advantages. Yeah. Yep, I say, I say those. Those would be the good ones to start with. So watch, watch your health. Watch uh, where, like you know, t who's alive and kill feed. And maybe just like where people are on the map, and then try to put that into your aggression scaling, right? So I I, I start off with all of that, um, and then and then of course like we said, there's like a lot more that go along with it, but start with with that, 
and then scale from there. A any final questions? No. No? All right. Cool, cool. I'll get you your recording.